Okay, today I'm going to show you how to do an in the hoop owl flap bag. Okay, it's two hoopings. First, we're going to do the flap. I already started before I started the camera, so I forgot. So first, you're going to hoop cutaway stabilizer. It will do the placement stitch for the owl's base head of his of the flap there. Okay, it'll tack it down. Then it'll do the placement stitch for the eyes. Okay, so do the placement, cover it with your vinyl, and tack it down. If I didn't say, after you tack down the base fat vinyl right here, trim around, okay? Now it's tacked down the eyes, and this does not do your standard placement, tack down, final stitch. This does a placement stitch, then a triple tack down and then you trim it there is no more sewing so on the eyes trim as close to the seam there as you can and the rest just um leave you know a little edge because that's you know kind of gives the owl the character and then trim around both eyes okay once you've trimmed the eyes all up send it over to the machine do the placement stitch for the color part of the eye okay as you see it's did the placement stitch for the eye color um, and if you notice on my owl on my bags I use the same color stitching for all of it it's all well mine is cream you can opt to change your colors but I think it gives it a little character once again so now cover your um, placement stitches with your fabric and or vinyl and tack it down okay once again as you see the tack down is actually the final stitch as well. So now you're just going to trim it, trim close to the top part. And the rest you just trim a little bit around the edge, you know, and leave a little overhang. And that's, you know, you leave as much as you want or as little as you want. Totally up to you. So there, so trim them both about like that and then send it over the machine and it'll do the tack down or the placement stitch for the pupil. Okay, it's did the placement stitch for the pupils. Now we're gonna cover it up with vinyl and go tack it down. Okay, it's did the tack down and the final stitch for the pupils. Now we're gonna trim around those as well, okay? I just wanted to share with you if you notice, it's a lot easier to, if you have a, a, a clean area, to trim around things like this by turning your hoop versus trying to do your scissors around. You know, do this with your arm. Makes it a lot neater. Just a little useful, useless information. Depends on what you think. Okay, now it's going to go do the placement stitch for the, I'm going to say the anger brows. Okay, be right back. Okay, there we have it. One eyebrow. And let's see, is this fabric long enough? Yeah, it is. Okay, so now I'm going to cover that up. And hopefully I can do both sides with this one piece of vinyl and go tack it down. Okay, obviously that's a negative Ghost Rider. I am not going to be able to use the same place piece. Oh, that's thunder. Okay, so now we're going to trim this the same as we did everything else. When you uh, trim the over the eye, just you know, be gentle so you don't poke through and cut anything like that. I leave a little bit extra on over the eye so it kind of looks like a little bit of an eyelid, kind of, sort of. Okay, and trim all the way up there. There you go. Okay, now it will do the placement stitch and we'll do the other eye. Before, I tried to do them both at the same time, placement stitch, but it made it difficult because this one kind of almost overlaps to trim them, so, so you have two steps. 
Okay, once both eyebrows are done, it'll do the placement stitch for the no the beak. I just wanted to remind you, see right here, it went, it's going through, well, this one goes through one, two, three, four pieces of vinyl. So you want to slow your machine down. You don't want it going crazy fast. You know, you might break a needle. I have not, knock on wood, broken one needle doing this but I do keep my machine going semi slow okay okay I did the placement stitch for the beak so now I'm gonna cover that with fabric or vinyl and tack it down okay it did his beak so now we're going to trim that up oh that got a little close I hate when that happens Oh, well, I have a different kind of character. Okay, now you're going to turn it over, your hoop over, and you are going to cover your back with your inside fabric or vinyl. I'm using vinyl. So I'm going to take a piece of vinyl and cut it, and then make sure I cover his beak. <laughs> Tape it in place, and then send it over for the tack down. Okay. I forgot to hit record. Okay, so take it out of the hoop and now you're gonna go around and trim it. And you're gonna trim just right up to the edge of the front. So just follow the front trim around and be careful you don't recut it. Or if you have a bit that isn't quite right, you can fix that right now. So when you get to the places like this, use a tip of your scissors so you don't cut into the next thing see and then just go around and uh trim it all up okay and from this one i'll do it this way from this angle okay there you go just like that okay there you go it's all trimmed there's the inside of your flap Cut any stragglers you have from your cutter. There you go. All right. Okay, now is when you would put your cam snap in. Okay, remember you have your cutaway stabilizer. So you want to go, you want to put your, your um, snap through the stabilizer too. That just gives it a little stability. Ha, ha, ha. Just kidding. No, really. <laughs> okay, so... For me to put mine in, I usually use my tweezers like this, and then um, I have it flat like this, and I want to go, you know, my face is on showing. Put this down all the way into the peak there, right? And kind of center it, poke it through as such. I put the male version of a cam snap on the parts that pull. First, I gotta get one. I need my glasses now, cause I can't see. And then put that there, and then I just use my placement, or my uh, snap tool, and go through there. And that way, your snap, the head of it, is through the inside and the outside, and you have nothing but that little, I probably should have put a piece of felt there to, uh, so it didn't indent, but that'll go away in a minute. So, and that way it's a hidden snap. Okay, now to the bag. Okay, I have my cutaway stabilizer hooped, and I will send it over the machine to a placement stitch. Okay, not that you can see it. I'll put it up like this. The placement stitch. Let me see if I can put something under it. If it'll be easier to see. Once again, I'm using all the same color thread because the only stitching that is going to show is the stitching that um, does this tack down and I want it to match that guy. So once again, mine's tan all the way around. So now you will take your zipper face up, a nylon zipper, and center it between those two lines, okay? So between the second and the third line, oh, and tape it in place. Come back 
here, get my tape, make sure it's centered in where I want it, and take this over here and tape it in place, okay? And then it'll go do the tack down. Make sure when it goes to stitch, stitch that this really stays. Sometimes I have to use my hand to help it make sure it doesn't pull up or anything because then that just makes stuff no, nah, I don't like it. Okay, it's tacked down the zipper. Okay, and then it does a placement stitch for the fabric. I know you could use the zipper line, but sometimes that confuses people. So, you need a piece of fabric that will cover the bottom part of your bag with a half inch to fold under and a half inch over. So, and then you're gonna take your fabric and put it up here line it up with the bottom of the zipper it's gonna tack it down and then you're gonna fold the fabric this way okay okay it's did the tack down stitch now i'm gonna pull my fabric this way and just press it out with my hands and now it's gonna do a stitch down across here and when i said the only stitches that are gonna show are the this part right here no inside this top line right here of the zipper above the zipper is going to show so if you don't want that the same color as uh your outline of your this guy you might want to change it me i'm just going to leave it okay see what i mean this this is going to show right there but i don't mind because it's going to match the stitching on this so if you mind then you might want to change it okay now the next it just did a placement stitch for the top part of the bag okay so you're going to take your piece of fabric and you are going to line it with the top of the zipper and what it's going to do is do a tack down stitch here and then you're going to fold this up okay okay it's tacked it down and now you're going to fold it up and it's going to stitch it down now remember if you're doing something like this like plaid you want to try to keep your lines a little bit straight okay be right back after the tack down okay it's did the tack down and it also did the placement stitch for my of uh, this decorative vinyl now you're gonna line it right up a straight edge with that stitch right there and make sure you cover it enough to do a little bit of a tr you know when you cut it and it needs to overhang the bottom at least a half an inch so I'm gonna line this right up with this and then send it over the machine and do a tack down. Okay, now it's did the tack down. So now I'm going to trim a vinyl and not the top because I lined that up so I don't have to trim the top. And once again, as I said, you want a little extra at the bottom. Mind you, you don't need that much extra, but But okay, now I'll send it over to the machine and we'll do the tack or the placement stitch for the other side. Okay, so it's did the placement, I did the tack down and I trimmed it, okay? So now the front the, the inside front of the bag is pretty much done. Um so now you're going to turn your bag over and you're going to take your lining which will hang down an inch at over the bottom and has a half inch at least folded under so you don't have a raw edge and you're going to place it and tape it just above the stitch line because here's the zipper right in between here so you're going to stitch it, or tape it right above that tape it in place and then do the tack down okay as you can see it's did the tack down now or the lining stitch tack down so now we're going to put the top pocket or the top lining with the half inch fold at least right here just below this line once again like so tape it in place and go tack it down okay as you can see it's tacked it all down everything looks good back here so now we're going to turn it back over and before i forget i'm going to remove my tape here the next step is to put the 
flap on, okay? So I'm gonna open my zipper now. I'm gonna open my zipper halfway, okay? Halfway, um, in like that. So now you're gonna take your, my, I didn't trim him because I didn't know how far I want him. You know, you can have them different lanes, you can have them shorter, you can have them taller, but what you have to make certain is that he is inside, the flap is inside these two side lines because if you stitch it down, you'll be sorry. I already did that on one. They don't come off so easily. So, all right, I am going to trim this off right now. I'll be right back. Okay, so I trimmed him up a little bit. So that way he's just down to this far. And I am inside my two lines. I'm gonna tape it because I do not want him to move once it goes to the machine because I do not want it to get stitched down. So it will just run a stitch across the top now remember, you have to make sure your um, your snap, if you want a hidden snap, is there, is inside before you stitch this. Because once it's stitched, you can't get in there. So, all right, be right back. Okay, it's tacked him down, and then it did the two stitches for your handle. However, you're going to attach it, you know, tabs to put your tabs for handles or whatever you're going to do, purse strap. Okay, I am going to do a wristlet, so I only want one, and I want a small, short one. I don't want it to hang out very far, so I'm going to tape this in place. I'm going to tape it twice because I want the bottom tape too, and then I'm going to tack this down, okay? Be right back. Okay, it's trimmed it in place. I'm gonna remove a little bit of some of my tape. And um, if you, you notice, the raw edge goes to the outside of the purse, okay? So I'm gonna remove this tape. Just for ease later, okay? Okay, now would be if you wanted a pocket on the outside back of your bag, like this one, okay? All right, now you would put that on. You don't have to, but now would be when you would do it. And what you would do is, um, it has to be below this stitch, you know, so, and it has to hang below here and you wanna put it face down. I am going to do mine just above the zipper there, okay? I'm gonna do it like this, and I'm gonna use my tape and tape it down because I do not want this to move, okay? Last thing I want is a crooked pocket, like it is. It is already, it is crooked. <laughs> All right, we don't want a crooked pocket. No crooked pockets. Okay, let me tape it again over here. Should never have too much tape, right? Hey, okay, so, all right, there we go. Okay, there's that. Now you're gonna put your fabric, your purse fabric, and it goes face down as well, and it just covers the whole purse. Make sure I got my bottom covered there, okay? If you pre-cut these, you know they're gonna fit. Me, yeah, I didn't pre-cut, but normally I do. And I think there's a size measurement uh, that will I will put with this. Not I think, I know there is, but I'll put it with it so you know what sizes to cut, except for the vinyl on there that I don't have sizes for that. You just cut that. Okay, it's stitched it down, and as you can see, it's a complete stitch because everything else will turn through the zipper. So hopefully you remembered to uh, open your zipper, because if you didn't, you're gonna have a little bit of a hard time there. Okay, I'm gonna take off some of this tape only because I don't want it there. Okay, now you're gonna turn your hoop over, and look, more tape. No, <laughs> I'm gonna take off this tape too because I need to put more tape back there. Okay, so I'm gonna take this tape off. There we go, give off my fingers. Probably could reuse some of that, but now it's all messed up. So now you're gonna take your other piece of 
um, lining. And once again, make sure it overhangs an inch at the bottom and a half inch all the way around, about a half inch, okay? Tape this in place and it will only do a partial stitch, okay? Okay, it has stitched it around like this. So now you're gonna take and remove your tape Tape, take it out of the hoop. Okay, and now you're gonna trim it. So I'm gonna trim the top first. Okay, I'm gonna go around and I'm gonna trim it about, I don't know, a quarter of an inch or so around, okay except for at the bottom. I'll show you in a second. I need to get some new scissors. Really, I do. It's all this vinyl I cut. Need some good ones. Okay, so before I forget and cut it off, so now take your, your lining at the bottom where the gap is right here. See, you have two pieces of lining. Fold that back, okay, and then trim everything underneath it you know, quarter inch or so away from the edge, okay? From the bottom of that, okay, like that, okay? Then you're gonna put this back down, and we only needed an inch overhang. Okay, so we're gonna go like that. And here's my, oh, see the opening is right here, the end, so I'm gonna take and I'm gonna cut this at an angle right up to that seam. Okay, now I will go around and cut the edges, trim the edges, I mean, all the way around. Oops, to that, okay? Huh, almost look, like I said, true that. <laughs> all right. Okay, I'm gonna cut that off right there. Whoa, I just shot. Okay, maybe do a couple little trims in there for my corners or my curves. Okay, now let me get this out of the way. Garbage. Okay, so there you go. Okay, it's all trimmed. Now you're gonna take it from the lining and you're gonna turn it right side out. And you're gonna be careful not to pull out your stitches there. So you're gonna take your fingers, use the corner, push them up. And depending on what kind of vinyl you use and fabric will depend on the ease of this part. You know, some of your tough, you know, your hard vinyl, especially the small purses. Like, this is the smallest one I do in this style bag. Okay, it would be hard to turn. So, there we go. We got it all flipped around. Take my hand, push it up there. My corners rounded out. See, you can see where the corners are. And where's my paintbrush? Because that is what I use. Use the paintbrush to poke my corners out like that. Okay. And there we go. And this is like this. And whoops. I didn't do this course. The curves there. Fabric glue and my wonder clips, okay? So now what you'll do is tuck your this in and you can see the seam there. So I'm gonna tuck that in like this and lay it flat and make sure you're, you know, you're lined up. And then I'm gonna, I'm gonna glue it. You can use tape, you can use, sew it. You just wanna make sure you don't get the purse itself, you know, the other side. So I'm gonna put a little glue here, clip it. Clip it. Okay, while my glue is drying, I am going to remove the stabilizer where my zipper is okay i'm just going to use my applique scissors and i'm going to slide it down make sure you don't catch the fabric because you won't be happy later okay so i'm going to trim that as such go around to the other side 
go down the edge. Let's see if I can put this under the camera so you can see. Oh, come on, don't be so difficult. And just slide it down. Once again, just make sure you don't slide it down and catch your fabric. Okay, and then do the other side the same. Okay, so just clean that up however you want to do it. You know, some people use tear away. I do not because I think it adds the stabilizer, the cutaway helps the purse be a little more sturdy. You know, with all the sewing and stuff you go through, and then, you know, so, and then I reach in here and I unzip my zipper the rest of the way. Okay, that little piece of stabilizer can come off. Not that it's going to hurt anything, but still. Hey, hey, all right, my applique scissors aren't wanting to cut. Hmm. All right, so now this dries for a minute. Well, as that's kind of drying, you'll see now you can pull your, um, your flap out. That's one thing. If you sew your bottoms closed, the last thing you want to do is sew your beak in there. So, <laughs> so I say, so I say, don't do that. Okay, poke out your corners, the top, see like that, yay. Okay, I'm gonna use one of these clips and the thing, so I'll show you how I do the handle to match this in a second. Okay, I'm gonna take my wonder clips off. Okay, now I'm gonna turn it right side out. Make sure you see you have a pocket. You don't wanna turn it inside, right side out from in there. You want it right side out from the right side. <laughs> okay, and I'm going to flip this in like this and push my bottoms out, my corners out. Come all nice and rounded. And this is kind of like a Christmassy kind of owl, sort of, kind of. Oh my gosh, she's so cute. Okay, take that little thing off, zip this closed. Now you can see this is where he will close right there. And I'm going to find a marker, one that will show up, uh, maybe yellow. Maybe yellow. Why is that piece of stabilizer want to be everywhere? Okay, so I'm going to do it like this. And uh, there's my, my cam snap. So I've got this guy all kind of centered. How I want him. I'm going to lift this up. Sorry, I'm going to lift this up and I'm going to make a little mark right here. Little mark so I know where my cam snap goes. Okay. I'm going to take this and I am going to poke through to the back. And I'm going to get my cam and my female. Whoops, that's not female. That is. And I'm going to put my cam snap, or however you want to do yours. You know, you don't have to use cam snaps if you don't want to. I do. And then I'm going to close this. Be right back. Okay, I've put my snap on the inside. There it is right there. Okay, there's my lining. Everything's honky-dory there. Okay, and now we're going to turn it over. And I am going to also put a snap on the back here, a cam snap on the back. You don't have to. Once again, you don't have to if you don't want to. But I want. So I am going to find my center. Okay, I'm going to find my center. And then I am going to make my mark where I want it. Oops. Okay. really where I want it and attach my snaps once the outsides on I just turn it over open the purse find the inside like that you know find the center I mean and then put the other half of this on and then poke it through like such and then 
find the other half of my snap, which is proving difficult. And then I'll attach that on the inside. Okay, now I have that all snapped there. See, there we go. And I think maybe there, I need to adjust these. I don't know, because they don't seem to be squishing it properly or something. So, okay, close this, and then I'll sort out a handle. Okay, for this I decided to do a wristlet, and I don't bother doing them on the machine when it's a one-off because it's a lot of wasted stabilizer. So I just took a one-inch one inch piece of vinyl and then a three-quarter inch piece of vinyl, and I triple stitched it down so it would match that. And now I will just fold in half, and I will attach my Clever Delights, it's a clamp, thing called from Clever Delights or called Clever Delights. I buy it on Amazon. Okay, so I'll put my Clever Delights on and then I'll use my pliers that I bought. You don't have to. You can use regular pliers if you want. And now I've attached it there and there. And there you go.